Hello once again. I've got a neat piece of vintage video equipment to show you guys today. This was something I found in a thrift store um, when I was in, a, in Maine when I was with my girlfriend over the weekend. I think I paid $6 for this. It's a Philips 9-inch Color TV VHS VCR combo. And this was made in 2001. This was made by Funai as most of these uh, TV VCR combo machines in the 90s and 2000s were and uh, It works just fine now. It didn't originally work just fine in Typical fashion for these Funai built TV VCR combos the TV worked excellently But the VCR did not work it, it didn't work correctly anyway. It did function on a basic level um, but it had a couple of problems. First of all, the VCR would not rewind or fast forward. And second of all, when you went to eject the tape, the tape would eject, but the loading motor would keep running after the tape had ejected. And then the TV would just go into an error condition and, and shut itself off. But I did fix those problems, and this thing is now working perfectly, which is awesome. So let's go over it here. So of course you got the 9 inch color CRT display. It's got this plastic screen over it. And you just push these clips in and it easily removes. Which is, whoops, which is very nice. Your VCR is of course down here. It's a standard unremarkable two head mono VCR. You got your transport controls down here. This does record. Your power button, volume controls, and channel controls. This does have a built-in TV tuner. You do get a headphone jack, which is cool. Mono, so it's only going to come out the left side if you put in stereo uh, headphones. And you can probably see the sensor for the remote control. I did get this with the remote control. Here is the remote control. It's got a number of keys for direct channel access. It's got OTR recording, so you can press record multiple times and it'll record for a half hour, hour, hour and a half, whatever. It does have pause. You can set it to uh, sleep after a while, automatically turn off. Although this does have automatic tracking, you can control the tracking manually with these buttons. Your speed button here, I think this only has two speeds, SP and SLP, and then the memory button for uh, the tape counter, so when you're rewinding a tape, once the tape counter reaches zero, it'll automatically stop rather than going all the way to the beginning of the tape. This does have a real-time tape counter rather than just an arbitrary one. This thing is so cool. I, I was so excited when I saw this. Even if the uh, VCR was completely dead, I was really excited to get this because I've seen so many of, of, of these TV VCR combos that are 13-inch. But I've never seen one that's 9 inch. And here's another really special thing about this. This doesn't have to run up to run on AC power. This is actually an AC DC system. You probably saw it right down there. This will run on 12 volt DC. It's got a standard barrel jack in the back for it. Your one speaker is right here. And we go around the back. It's a model CCC092AT01, rated 55 watts or 60 watts on 13.2 volts DC. Made in Malaysia, July 2001. Somebody wrote there what looks like September 23rd, 2001. Maybe that was written when this was purchased. And there you can see it's got a uh, stereo style AC input jack, but then it's got a barrel plug for DC, rated 13.2 volts. Center positive. And yeah, I've tested this on uh, DC. I put this on my Numar 12 volt linear power supply, which gets very hot when it's running this thing. And yeah, it, it works just as great on DC as it does on AC and the VCR works and everything. It's really cool. I did a little test just for funsies and it'll work down to about 10.8 volts at which point it shuts down. There's an RF input for an antenna. And that's about it. The uh, RF is the only input on the back. You've got a little antenna holder. But you do get an AV input 
on the front. There's a record indicator LED. It's a it's a really cute little unit. Super convenient. Um, even just alone as a TV, this has been great because I'm finally resuming digitizing the rest of my uh, uh, VHS uh, material, commercials, and station IDs and stuff that I have that I give to a friend of mine in Quebec who digitizes it and uploads it on his YouTube channel called ATV and ASN Memories. Um, he took over the work that I originally started on my tertiary channel, CPQ5360. So, I've been uh, trying to digitize the rest of the material I have to DVD to send off to him. And I've been using this set as the monitor, and it's working excellently for that. It's, it's just a great little TV set. The CRT has about 350 lines of resolutions, and so that's that's way better than, for example, my 5-inch uh, Radio Shack Portavision um, that had like 80 lines or 100 lines of, of uh, horizontal resolution. And it just sucked because it made small text and stuff unreadable. This is way better. You can read small text and, and stuff um, just fine. It's It's great. So, let me plug this in. And uh, we will demonstrate it. So, I've got this plugged in now. We'll turn it on. So, there we are. And uh, I'll stick a tape in that has some random, very old material on it. A news broadcast from about 10 or 15 years ago. Hit play. There you go. The Baba Amr section of the city had been blasted into ruins in a month long bombardment by the military. The audio is kind of sucky, really hollow sounding, but it gets loud enough. We can do forward search here. And in typical fashion of these Funai VCRs, it has two speeds. Same for reverse search. Hit play. This march in Al Hasaka, organized by women on International Women's Day. In Egypt, though, former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan, now special envoy. So, while this is playing, I'll explain the problems that were uh, with this VCR and how I solved them. So, the first problem was that the um, it, when you hit rewind or fast forward, Nothing would happen for a few seconds, and then the TV would just turn off. It would throw an error condition. Well, what was happening was the idler gear was not engaging with the reels. It was, it was just a little stiff. And I hadn't yet done any work to this VCR, so I, I hadn't gone through and, and lubricated it or anything. But I found um, through dozens of uh, repetitions of rewinding and fast forwarding, eventually the idler lubricated itself on its own that it began working and this thing started rewinding and fast forwarding, which is great. So the second problem, I wonder if I can help balance this out by lowering the brightness. So here's the on-screen menu. I wonder if I can just... There. Good enough, I suppose. So, the second issue with, with this thing was when you went to eject a tape, it would eject, but then the loading motor would keep running, and then the it would throw an air condition and the system would shut down. What was causing that problem was, um, there's a switch on the PCB that the uh, VHS mechanism mounts to. There's a There's a little switch that when you put a tape in, that switch gets pressed in, and that tells the VCR that the tape has been successfully inserted. When you eject the tape, that switch becomes unpressed. It opens up, and that tells the system that the tape has successfully ejected. So the issue is that the switch was basically sticking closed, and when you went to eject a tape, the switch would stick closed, I don't think it was stuck closed permanently, but it would stick closed for at least a little while after the tape was ejected, and the VCR would think that the tape had not ejected. 
So how I fixed this was I actually opened this thing up and took it apart, which was a bit nerve-wracking. I'm always nervous, as you guys know, I'm always nervous working inside something with a CRT. And this is the biggest CRT um, that I had ever worked on. But I took this thing apart, which was really easy to do. Um, there's one, two, three four screws on the back and then a fifth screw back here that the uh, high voltage, the flyback transformer and associated circuitry mounts to. Um, so you take those five screws out and the back of the TV comes off, no problem. And then the VCR mechanism just slides out and there's four or five connectors that connect the VCR mechanism to the CRT, to the flyback, um, uh, and to the speaker and, and everything else. So you just unplug those, they're all pluggable. And then you have the freestanding VCR that you can work on. And from there you can just work on the VCR like any VCR. And I gave the VCR in this thing a full service. I cleaned it, I took away all the old grease, put down new grease, worked the idler by hand to make sure that it wasn't gonna stick anymore when you try to rewind or fast forward. And I also cleaned the mode switch and the tape insertion switch. So on this VCR, the mode switch is actually mounted on the uh, circuit board. The entire switch is just on the circuit board. And the cam gear, one of the cam gears, or the cam gear, I forget if there's more than one, but a cam gear on the VCR mechanism has a little pin that locates into a little hole on the mode switch and that spins the mode switch around and that's how the circuitry knows what mechanical position the VCR is in. Um, is it in the resting position? Is it in the ejected position? Is it uh, doing a reverse search? You know, stuff like that. So in order to get to that switch, I just had to remove the uh, mechanism from the PCB. This is a modern VCR. It's a modern deck on board design. And uh, I just had to remove the deck which was easy to do. It was just a few screws and the, the deck just unplugs from the board. There's no wires, just uh, unscrewing the screws and pulling the deck up from the board. And it's got a few plugs that, uh, that are on the bottom that unplug from the board when you pull it up. And from there, I was able to get to the mode switch. The mode switch was super easy to take apart. Um, and yeah, I, I just cleaned the mode switch. I took a cotton swab and some uh, 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 contact cleaner and I cleaned out the mode switch, I cleaned out the little fingers and then I sprayed contact cleaner into the tape insertion switch which is, which is a little micro switch and I worked that by hand and when I worked that switch by hand I felt the switch go from spongy to actually having a bit of a tactile uh, click to it so I knew there, I knew then that uh, the mode switch was definitely um, having a bit of an issue probably the, or not the mode switch, the tape insertion switch. That switch probably came with grease inside it that was meant to lubricate the switch components. Um, that grease probably went, you know, got stale, hardened up, whatever, and didn't do its job properly anymore, and it just gummed up the switch and, and didn't make the contacts move open and close freely as it's supposed to. So, I got the mode switch and the tape insertion switch cleaned up, I put the mechanism back on the board, screwed it in, um, connected all the connectors back up to the VCR, put it back in the set, closed the set up, tried it, and this thing worked. Except actually, it didn't work at first. Um, I had a bit of a scare. Once I got this thing back together, I found that everything was working fine now. Rewind and fast forward was working fine, and ejecting the tape was working fine now. But I found that now when I played a tape, it wouldn't sync to the proper speed of the tape. It was just playing the tape way too fast. And I noticed that while the tape was playing, the tape counter was not advancing. And I'm like, oh crap, I've lost the control head. The circuitry is not getting any signal from the control head. And I knew right there that it must mean that a connector didn't seat back on the PCB properly when I installed the VCR mechanism back on the PCB. See, what really sucks about um, this VCR is that the deck connects to the PCB through these really crappy flexible connectors. And when you put, 
when you're removing the deck from the PCB, it's fine, but when you're reinstalling it, you're literally just forcing those flexible connectors back into the into their sockets, and that's not good for serviceability. You have to be super careful reinserting the deck, or you could mess up those connectors. You could bend the, the flexible connectors, you could separate the little metal fingers from uh, from the the connector and that's what happened in my case the the one of the flexible connectors had bent a little bit while I was reinstalling the VCR and the metal fingers that go to the control head had peeled off of the flexible material that they were adhered to and the control head wasn't making contact with the PCB anymore so what I had to do was take it out and try my best with a pocket knife to straighten out those metal connectors and get them flush with the flexible uh, part of the connector again and then reinstall the deck onto the PCB and do it really carefully and then just pray, just pray when I put the VCR back in this thing and tested it that I would have a control head and that everything else would be working and well uh, that was about a month ago and this thing is still working now so luckily I did not permanently damage anything um, but I have learned now to be extra careful when working on these one of these Funai VCR mechanisms that use flexible connectors um, to connect the mechanism to the PCB what a terrible design for a as for for how surprisingly serviceable this VCR is in every other way, the use of those flexible connectors is terrible. They should have just used regular old you know pin can as pin based connectors rather than that flexible ribbon connector crap. Oh, it's terrible. But luckily, this thing is working perfectly now, and hopefully, I will never have to take this apart again. But the important thing is now. We've got a perfect working 9 inch TV VCR and it's just, it's so cute and it actually works really well. As you can see, the VCR works just great. The other option is to see if you could change the international balance of power by bringing Russia on a different side. It's a, it's a long shot. At this point, I think it's the best we can do. Robert Malley and Danny abdul -Zain. I'll do a fast forward here. And I'll do a rewind. And I'll eject. Perfect. What a nice little TV VCR and it's funny all my life I've seen so many of these Funai built TV VCR combos and all of them have a non-working VCR and now I've gotten this one and I've been able to fix it and get it working this is the first one of these TV VCR combos I've ever seen that with a properly working VCR that's so funny even my mother had one when I was a toddler this was back in the mid 90s so it was only like a few years old, actually it might have been only a couple of years old and the VCR had already quit working, um, which is just so funny. But we have a survivor here from 2001. It's a rare type because it's only nine inch rather than 13 inch and it can run on 12 volt DC if you want. And it's perfect working. It's got a great working TV and it's got a perfect working VCR and that is just so cool. Well, I figure for my next trick, let's demonstrate the recording and playback quality of the VCR directly. So, I shouldn't have to explain this after 11 years and dozens of times of doing this, but I always get questions about what I'm doing. I've got my digital A camcorder connected to the AV input. You can see when I move the camcorder around, this is showing what the camcorder is seeing. Ergo, when I hit record, this will be recording what my camcorder is seeing and hearing. Once I've made my recording onto VHS, I'm going to actually put the VHS tape in another VCR because this doesn't have a means of playing the VCR out to anything other than the built-in TV. So to get a direct quality uh, feed, I'll have to put this in another VCR to play it back. 
I'll hook my camcorder to the AV output of the playback VCR, record what's on the VHS tape onto digital aid tape, then hook the camcorder to my computer via Firewire and transfer the recording, thereby digitizing the VHS video to my computer so I can put in this video. So, without further ado, let's have a little demonstration recording. Alright, we are now making a recording onto the onto the uh, built-in VCR on the Philips 9-inch TV VCR combo made by Funai in 2001. You can see right here the record light is lit up and uh, here's what everything looks like. So we're currently recording in SP. I will switch to SLP by pressing the speed button. You actually have to press it twice. And there it says SLP. Because this is just a two-head mono VCR, um, by going from SP to SLP, uh, video quality will be slightly degraded and audio quality will be quite a bit degraded now. But here's the recording quality in SLP. And then I will switch back to SP. And we're now recording in SP again. Video quality and audio quality should be better now. And that pretty much concludes our little demonstration. So there you go. The final thing I'll show before we wrap up this video is just the uh, menu, the on-screen menu here, which you can only access if you have the remote. But uh, You can auto-program what channels are available, show what's already been memorized. Oh, never mind, this is a cable-capable tuner. I didn't think it was. It does have a built-in clock, so you can do programmed recordings on this, just like any VCR which is very nice. So you can have the VCR automatically set the clock from the uh, time signal sent from television programs, which is cool. I'm not sure what defeat recording is. My guess would be if the timer recording is happening, you can, if you have this turned on, you can shut the recording off um, but if you turn it off, it'll protect you from accidentally shutting off a timer recording. Reminder is just a constant indicator of uh, what input you're on or what channel you're on. So this will show all the time if you have it turned on. And I imagine it would eventually burn itself into the CRT, so I keep it off. Your brightness and your picture, which is also brightness but it just has a really... Brightness is like a finer adjustment, whereas picture is the coarse adjustment. And uh, I've had it all the way down for the camera, but this video is over now, so I can put it back up to, uh, to a normal brightness. But uh, yeah, that's about it. So there is a look at the Philips Funai Built 9-inch TV VCR combo from 2001. What a neat little device. I'm really glad I came across this in a thrift store. It needed, in typical Funai fashion, it needed some work to uh, get it get the VCR working. But since then it's been working great and the TV part has always worked perfect. It's a great little TV and this thing has been very useful to me um, while I do my, uh, the rest of my uh, VHS digitization work. So there you go, neat little device. Can even run on 12 volts if you want. So you can put this in your car, your RV, whatever. Really friggin' cool. So, there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, I will see you in the next one.